1999, I remember getting my first computer and thinking about getting a digital camera. They were coming in, but the quality still wasn't brilliant. A camera which was on the market in 1999, a film camera, was this. This is the Nikon AF240SV. And it's at the time that the Nikon Light was a very popular camera. And there was lots of compact zoom cameras out. This was a slightly cheaper camera and it's a um, fits focal, um, it's automatic focusing, but the focal length is 28 mil. And ride angle, we've seen a lot of 32 mil ride angle, well, moderately ride angle lenses on compact cameras. And a 28 is even, you know, a little bit more ride angle. And these were very popular for parties and landscape and um, they make good street photography cameras. It's particularly light. If we look at this camera, as I said, it was launched in um, 1999. Um, it's a very simple camera. It's got this sort of gold color, which was very popular at the time. It's DS coated, um, coded, I mean. So we simply pop the cassette there. It defaults to 100 um, ISO, feeds over here. We've got a really nice large bright viewfinder which is really bright. We have a flash override on the front and automatic focusing, automatic exposure, flash. Unfortunately the flash isn't working on here but everything else is. We've got a cover for the lens. We've got a counter on the top. As I said, it's extremely light. It's very convenient because it takes two AA batteries. And that was it. Um, I bought this camera some years ago and, well, I bought a camera like this some years ago and then sold it. Um, and it's taken me quite a long time to find another one. And I was wondering, I wasn't expecting much from this camera. I thought it's very straightforward and um, as I said, I was not expecting much from it. However, it was uh, very light to use, very easy to use. Let's see if it was capable of getting any good results. For these photographs, I went down to Kimmeries in Dorset, where there's still quite a lot of concrete left from the Second World War. And here we see two bollards on the beach. But the camera focused very easily, even with these quite close up rock formations that I thought might be a bit too close. The camera actually coped. This is a very light and easy camera to use, which I was sort of surprised with how sharp the results actually came out. And I think one of the reasons why the results are good is that it's a fit focal, fixed focal lens. And actually, when we have a zoom lens on the compact, especially with the cheaper compact cameras, the zoom just isn't perhaps all that good. Where this fixed focal lens is actually of reasonable quality. And I'm not sure what the groupings were, um, but as you can see, both close subjects, medium subjects and far subjects are reacting well. Plus, the actual exposure meter seems good. I mean, yes, it is helped by the fact that it's a very bright evening. It was a April evening about five, six o'clock when I went down to this wonderful spot in Dorset. Kemmeris is fascinating for so many regions. But it's actually on top of a oil reserve and you can't see it on the photo but there's a nod nodding donkey that's been there for at least 60 years. And this area, as I said, is absolutely delightful. The camera was... Um, surprisingly as I said good 
um, I think nearly every image I took on the film actually was usable. I haven't um, bored you with all of them, but I moved on to the village of Corth Castle, which is quite close. And again, it would be beneficial to have a filter, but of course we can't pop a filter on this compact. But if you wanted a light compact that isn't, I mean, these things are not expensive. When you look at things like MU, um, some of the Olympuses, this can be purchased actually very cheaply. And I would actually prefer it to the Zoom lights, which I thought I was going to really like, but had issues with them. This was a surprisingly good camera, I thought. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.